single conductor deration. In this presentation, we're going to look at some of the rules and what they're actually indicating about how to derate single conductor cables. So let's not beat around the bush. Single conductor deration can be tricky. I mean, honestly, it is a bit of a mixed bag when it comes to its application. And your only saving grace is to identify the relevant rules. If you don't know which rule to go to, you will be lost. And when we compare this to the typical multi-conductor uh, in conduit deration, it's a much more odd process that we must go through. So what are the necessary rules? Well, the necessary rules are right here. So let's zoom in and take a look at what the required rules are when we're doing single conductor applications. You'll notice that there are four rules that I have identified from 4-004. And more importantly, you'll notice that they're not really grouped or arranged in the same, like right beside each other concurrently. We have 4-004-1A, which is for 100% diameter spacing. And it says could be more than 100% unlimited number of cables. And that's simply because it doesn't indicate there's a maximum. And the rule states to use table one. Now, 4004 sub rule eight is the next one that we would use for single conductor cables. And it says this is for spacing between 25 to 100% diameter of the cable. It does not exceed 100%. And we've got unlimited number of cables. Now, notice the tables they say to use, table one and 5D. And so far, everyone's with me. They're like, yep, that makes sense. Yeah, table one, that's my single conductor table, table one here, plus a little bit of duration. All right, so let's continue on to 4004, several nine. What if the cables are spaced less than 25% diameter spacing? doesn't exceed 25%. And then it has a maximum, it says maximum four cables. And all I'm doing is I'm, I'm just sort of grabbing the big things out of the actual rule itself. Now the rule says, use table one and table five B is in Bob. Well, that's a little bit different than five D. So there is a difference between these two. And well, everything seems to make sense for the first three. What about the last one? Notice the last one. This is kind of like the worst case scenario when it comes to single conductor application. What if you have single conductor cables spaced less than 25% and more than four cables? What is the rule state to use? And this is where it gets a little odd. Table two and table five C, which in effect would essentially make your calculation exactly the same as what we would have done with a multi-conductor application. So this is really weird. Now they're talking all about percent diameter. Now what on earth are they referring to there then? Like what percent diameter am I supposed to be using? Well, here's a single conductor cable and the single conductor cable has a diameter. Now you can either go to the manufacturer's specs or you can just use this thing, which is called a tape measure. This is approximately one and a half inches. If it's one and a half inches, that would then mean that I can determine what 100% spacing is. That means one and a half inches space between this cable and the start of the next cable, less than 100%, so all the way down to like there, down to 25%. We could do a quick calculation to determine what that would be. And then less than 25%, and that would be like the conductors almost together. Right, so one and a half inches for 25% spacing. I'm just doing it on my calculator here. One and a half divided by four, that would be 0.37 of an inch. So we're talking like really small, right? We're talking like uh, not a half, but three eighths of an inch, right? So they're talking about distances that the cables can be apart. So let's put a little bit of visuals then for each one of these situations that they refer to. Now what I'm going to use is a standard size cable that is three inches in diameter. So we've got an example here which reflects what we have in several one item A. This 
is an installation where we have conductors, single conductor cables that are spaced a significant distance apart. So here we have three inches and the distance in between each one of these cables then has to be at least, it has to be more than 100%. So we've got three inch, could be 3.1 inch, could be 3.5 inch. Honestly, could be six inch. Of course, it's not to scale, but you get the idea. It could be more than. And in this scenario, based on the rule, we can see that if we have this type of install, we're able to use table one with no derations. This would be the best possible situation. So at least 100% diameter spacing. Now, obviously, this isn't going to happen every single time. And so if we take a look at the next example, the next example is 4004 sub rule 8. So 4004 sub rule 8 indicates that we're talking about spacing that's between 25% up to 100%. So what's 25% spacing of a three inch uh, cable? So three inch divided by four is 0 0.75. So the closest I can go would be three quarters of an inch, but I can go all the way up to 100%. So I can go, well, 2.5 inches, 2.8 inches, maybe 2.9 inches, all of that. So this is a little bit more restrictive. The cables are not nearly as far away in that means that there's going to be more heat that's being transferred between the conductors. Now, what's important about this is that 25 to 100% spacing for several eight is an unlimited number of cables. So I could have a dozen cables. It doesn't really matter. I just need to ensure that the spacing doesn't get any closer than three quarters of an inch. Okay, well, what about when we're getting a wee bit closer? than three quarters of an inch, right? So we've got our three inch cable and several nine indicates what we need to do for that. And we'll notice that we're using a different duration table, but now we're getting closer. So less than 25%. So remember we said 25% for this cable was equal to uh, three quarters of an inch. And that means that we're less than that. So this could be like maybe a half inch. And this could be in contact because it's zero up to 25%. So in this situation, you'll notice that they start making a distinction, less than 25% diameter spacing, maximum four cables. If we were in a situation where there was more than these four cables, this is the worst case scenario. And we can see here that now we would need to ensure that we are following the correct rule. So again, 25% spacing for this particular cable was equal to three quarters of an inch. What this then means is that same scenario, I could go like a half inch here and I could go in contact for sure, but this would be for more than four cables. So that would be for adding all these cables here. And this is often what we see in cable tray, where we've added a whole bunch of additional cables and they're all in contact with one another. But guess what? As soon as we have more than four cables, notice that the duration process that we go through is pretty much identical to a multi-conductor installation. And at that point, you have to ask yourself, why are you doing it this way? You have absolutely uh, shot the entire reason for doing single conductor cables because usually they can carry more current. Now it's pretty much the same as having just put them in conduit. Hmm. So a few things to consider. The application of duration is always going to be the same when it comes to uh, different types of installations. And what I mean by that is that we can use duration factors to determine the allowable ampacity of a cable 
And we can also use duration factors to determine the size of cable. Now, obviously it's the same duration factor for both processes. On this one here, what we have to do is take the load, or sorry, take the ampacity of the wire. So wire ampacity. And we, well, you have a choice. You can either multiply or divide by the duration factor. And if we have the wire, then we are multiplying by the duration factor. If instead we're trying to determine the size of the cable while we're taking the load, and the load is going to be divided by the duration factor. And in that situation, we then use the answer that we get to size the wire. On this one, we simply use the answer we get to determine what the maximum allowable ampacity is of that particular wire in that situation.